touch base on a couple of questions that you probably, you know, we can, we can rattle off. The um, Iceland situation, what we've heard through our research is that um, Russia actually apparently helped them out financially when they said, told the IMF to kind of go away. Um, one of the interviews I've seen on YouTube was from an Icelandic politician saying he could not understand why Ireland did not default on the loans, why, you know, why that's going on. And apparently they said 73% 73 of the people had a referendum, even though parts of the government wanted to um, uh, go into Europe, 73% of people said that they didn't want to go in there, so actually they're not going in. The question is, because Iceland seemed to be doing it right, we are coming up to the now the general election, which we know is, is going to happen in Ireland. We have, I mean, basically we only have four parties. How do you see it? What do, you know? What would you? What would be your advice to people now? Where do we go with only four parties to vote for? My my um, observation would be that it actually right now it doesn't matter which of those parties comes into power. Mm. Tragically, Sinn Fein, in my observation, has too much baggage to be a credible alternative. Mm. I mean, it, it's a tragedy because I mean what I've seen of Sinn Fein recently, and particularly Piers Doherty. I mean, he's been very very impressive, very eloquent presentation that he gave in the doll mm. um, back in I think it was December mm. um, but tragically there isn't a credible alternative and um, I think that something has to emerge at grassroots level that is going to bring about fundamental change now if there is the perception mm. that this grassroots movement is growing at such a phenomenal rate then hopefully the politicians will start to realize and get uh, a feel of the zeitgeist if you like and start to look at the alternatives because my observation would be that it doesn't matter what the rhetoric pre-election whoever gets into power is basically going to be forced to go along with the Cowan Lenihan commitment to bail out the banks and to effectively accept the uh, bailout funds from the UK from the IMF from the EU Central Bank so and if that happens of course then in reality, I mean, Ireland has effectively put itself into eternal hock. Mm. Um, and, and what will happen, as Lenihan has uh, predicted, is you know, potentially 100,000 people will leave the country this year, most of them between the ages of 18 and 25. It'll be the people who have received a wonderful education here, thanks to the Irish education system. Mm. It'll be the people that have learned skills, trade skills, like plumbers and carpenters and... Um, you know, doctors, nurses, etc., etc. So Ireland at that point is on the very slippery slope uh, into a situation that is almost irrecoverable. Now, hopefully, that can be avoided, but it, in my opinion, it can only really be avoided by a politician coming forward. And maybe this person isn't in the political arena yet, but somebody coming forward who has the conviction, the vision and obviously the, um, the leadership, the charismatic leadership perhaps, to be able to put forward a viable alternative which the people can um, uh, buy into and, and challenge the, well, we, the we, bankers. We have, what, a month? Probably two, I don't two think it's going to happen in this election. I mean, it's, tragically, mm. <coughs> tragically, this is a classic case. I think there isn't enough shit here in Ireland yet. Yeah. People aren't hurting enough. Mm. And I'm not saying this lightly. I know. Please, I mean, I, you know, I know what you mean. Don't, yeah. don't, get me, don't take me the wrong way in here. I'm not advocating it. But unfortunately, it probably needs to happen. Look, we know on a personal level mm. that if we can just keep doing the same old, same old stuff day in, day out, we're probably likely to keep doing it because we are fundamentally, humanity, unfortunately, mm. a generic observation, is fundamentally lazy. We like to take the easy option. Mm. So fortunately, or unfortunately, mm. whichever way you look at it, yeah. life has a way of kicking us up the butt. Mm. And what it does is to do that is it creates a drama in our life. Mm. And that drama can be the loss of a job, mm. it can be illness, it can be you know, somebody's death, it can be a family separation, but it's a drama, it's a trauma. Yeah. And, and these occur when you kick us up the backside and, and actually you know, teach us mm. that... We actually need to do something different mm. because if we just carry along the same route, it's going nowhere. So what you're talking about is harmony versus disharmony. 
we go along until something disharmonizes what we're doing. And yes. that's when change is going to take place. Exactly. Yeah. And what we need to see, unfortunately, is a, is a much greater level of hardship here in yeah. Ireland. I mean, if people think that, you know, the, the budget that has just been um, introduced is an austerity budget, they haven't seen nothing yet. Mm. They really haven't seen anything. I mean, last night on the Late Late Show, you know, we heard somebody talking about how you know, they'd seen their family income reduced by 350 euros a month and, and they were already living mm. on a subsistence level. Mm. Yet interest rates are going to get higher. That's, that's a given. Yeah. And so these people who are already, already struggling to deal with the loss of 350 euros a month, they're then going to have to find even more money to be able to uh, live. The Icelanders have come up with a solution mm. because what they have uh, identified is that as people's property is losing value because of the slump caused by the bankers, mm. it's the bankers that need to take the loss. So what they're saying is that people's mortgages will reduce in proportion mm. to the fall in the property market. What? So that's the sort of thing that you know mm. maybe needs to be put forward, but it's not going to happen no. until People are so deep in the proverbial doo-doo yeah. that they're basically knocking on the politician's door saying, OK, enough's enough. Mm. If you aren't going to do this, then yeah, we're at 1916 all over again. But we're not in debt because we talk about fractional banking. That money doesn't exist. So these people that have mortgages based on fractional banking money that doesn't exist, hence why the banks don't sign the documentation because they know they're committing fraud. So surely they, they can sign off a high percentage of these mortgages because the bank won't be in debt anyway. Well, it's interesting because that's recently happened in Connecticut in the, uh, in the um, US. Mm. And it, it, I mean, we've still got a significant amount of legal process to go through. Mm. But I mean, it's looking as though you're absolutely right. And if the banks can't produce the appropriate documentation, the courts are going to rule that there is no requirement for the individual to pay their mortgage. Therefore, the house is in the ownership of the individual. Mm. Um, and, and that's part of the process. And this is where, you know, the Irish people have to embrace their countrymen that have vision in these particular areas. I mean, Morgan Kelly is just one bad example. I'm not suggesting that he's the panacea. But he and, uh, you know, there are other economists need to get their heads together and they need to be pretty much given a free hand to be able to come up with a game plan. Mm. And I absolutely guarantee that ultimately that game plan would absolutely mean kicking out the central banks. Mm. Because, and that has to be the model mm. elsewhere in the world as well. We have to shut down the central banks. The country has to say, guys, you know, enough's enough. Mm. We are now going to set up our own national bank mm. owned by the people, mm. administered through the government, but any interest, that any interest that's charged, effectively comes back into the national coffers and is used to finance uh, public services, which is exactly what happens in North Dakota. So the same the principle States. as uh, Lincoln did with the greenback. Exactly. Which, which, of course, look, look at what it got him. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, the same thing with um, JFK. JFK yeah. was about to do the same thing. So we know that this is a high-risk strategy, mm. which is why I made the observation that it's going to take a politician with incredible fortitude. Mm. And it's going to have to have, that politician, he or she, mm. is going to have to have the implicit and explicit support of the people. So that if anything untoward happens, mm. then at least there is uh, you know, perhaps somebody ready to step into their shoes and take it forward. Because ultimately, the guys who are driving this agenda are very small in number. Yeah. You know, they have phenomenal power because they control the money today and then they control the weapons. Mm. But they're relatively small in number. Mm. You know, if a, if a population really starts to come together and unite mm. and challenge, then ultimately, hopefully, it can be done relatively painlessly, well, as I, in South I, Korea. I think it should be an actual group and not one person. That makes things harder. Now, Let me just make the observation. Mm. The moment a group is established, it becomes easily susceptible to infiltration. Yeah. So... I would not advocate a group. Okay. The opposition know how to play groups very, very well. I can pretty much guarantee you mm. that every party, every political party in this country is infiltrated okay. in one way, shape or form. Basically, what's occurring within the truth movement mm. is, and the title, the title is that we have the sovereign independent newspaper here, but, you know, what we need to be working on is encouraging independent sovereignty. Mm. And then it's what I call um, independent collectivism, mm. which is a wonderful contradiction of terms. Because 
what these guys are trying to foist on us is collectivism, whether it be fascist, i.e. corporate collectivism, or social collectivism. But where we need to move towards to is individual collectivism, where there is no hierarchy, there is no organisation, there is no structure. And I'm not talking about anarchy. Mm. I'm talking about you know a, a cohesion. Well, we have to grow people. up. We have exactly. to be adults. Exactly. We have to exactly. grow up and realise who we are, be self-aware who we are, and take responsibility for our actions. Exactly. And for you know the land around us. And um, the other thing that came through the news, I don't know whether you heard about this. Um, I read it the other day. Is that the ECB have given the Irish Central Bank Authority to print 51 billion euros. Now, this is counterfeiting because there's nothing to back it up. There's no bonds well, to back it's all counterfeiting. Up. But what, is, what that means is rampant inflation. Mm. I mean, it, there is absolutely no alternative. The moment that magnitude of, uh, of money is flooded into the system, you have rampant inflation. So, you know, what will happen is that effectively the savings of people mm. will be decimated. Yeah. And that is why it, I would absolutely encourage people, if they have any degree of uh, personal liquidity, yeah. to take a very, very careful look at how they might protect that, or have, protect the purchasing power of that liquidity. Um, and maybe that's, to, and I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor, so yeah. I'm not suggesting for a moment that people yeah. should you know, take anything I say at face value again. But take a look at websites like Kitco, K-I-T-C-O dot com, which is effectively the global bible for gold trading. Mm. Um, and I would encourage people to take a look at what has happened with the price of gold over the last 10 years. Mm. Because gold has, for a long time, been the staple for protecting purchasing power. Yeah. You're not going to get rich by investing in gold, but you will hold your purchasing power. Mm. But if money is just left in the bank, then if uh, 51 billion is going to be flooded into the system, then the inflation is going to go into double figures fairly quickly. Well, it's like history. It happened in Germany. That's what Germany did during World War II. Absolutely. So history is repeating itself. Um, the other question that I have for you is, let's look at the next few years. Let's look at this. Uh, you talked about solar flares. You talked about this um, DNA that's going to be active. And you're not the only person that's talked about this. David Wilcox on the show talked about this, and a few other people talked about it. Give us your thoughts on that. Listen, I am a complete agnostic, right? I, I am, and I don't have an attachment to any particular outcome. And anybody who tells you they know exactly what's going to happen in the immediate future is delusional. Um, and the best thing you could do is actually turn around and walk in the other direction. What we do know from our, um, our, our research, our studies, by looking at the research of uh, the people that have been working very closely with the indigenous peoples around the world over the last sort of uh, um, 50, 60 years. And we cannot deny that there is a commonality of philosophy and belief and wisdom that's coming out from these people. And they don't have an internet. So you're talking about the likes of the Hopi Indians, the I Ching, the, the, the Mayan, the Mayans, the Aztecs. The Maori. Maoris, yeah. You know, yeah. In, in, the India, the, um, the, the Vedic, mm. you know, etc., etc., all over. Mm. Um, and basically what they're saying is that you know, we're at a particular juncture in our evolutionary process where you know, we have a lot of choices to make. And you know, what, the reason I went to Peru last year was because I wanted to hear it you know, like direct from the horse's mouth. That's a very good so story, yeah. uh, very interesting. Yeah, I, I, and, um, I don't know whether it's true. It's what these guys believe. Yeah. And, and they are absolutely of the opinion that uh, it's um, knowledge and wisdom that has been passed down from father to son over all the generations that they were up in the high Andes. Mm. So, um, and like you say, they're not the only ones. Mm. The solar flares, I mean, NASA have been talking about the solar flares for some time. You know, we've seen articles in the media about the solar flares potentially causing the breakdown of electricity grids, mm. you know, which would mean the shutdown of the internet, the shutdown of ATMs. Mm. Um, maybe even uh, destroying the internal combustion engines. Yeah. So all of these have been put forward as technical hypotheses. When I spoke to the Quero about this, they said, well, so, yeah. you, know, it, you may not need them. Because as the solar flares, in their opinion, awaken, switch on the DNA, which we have been told is junk DNA, mm. then it may open our bounds of perception 